Welcome back to my animal education series. We are back for another annual Christmas Eve St. Louis Zoo visit. That's a mouthful, but all I want to talk to you about is what we have going on here. So this is a primate canopy trail that the St. Louis Zoo has been building uh, this year. Uh, I imagine COVID has probably slowed down production because they can't have as many people working on it. But I actually heard about this well over a year ago from a couple friends of mine who worked here and they kind of overheard it in the background. But it's really cool to see this come to fruition. So basically, it's going to have multiple different parts to get you closer to the animals. In my opinion, like, you really couldn't get that close with the primates because they had, they had the glass in front of you, but it was cool and all, but this brings a whole different level to the experience. So the first thing that I've got to have here is they're going to have a glass tunnel that you can walk through in this big old lemur enclosure. At least from this picture, it looks like it's going to be lemurs in there. And they can walk around the enclosure and be right next to you, crawl over you, and do all that cool stuff. And then once you come out of here, you get to walk up, and they have a bunch of stuff like up there. They got well, rope bridges. I think that's pretty neat. They have kind of a jungle gym vibe to it. And then over here, they have a pathway that goes around several enclosures. So you kind of walk around in like these circular formations and kind of see different species of lemurs and monkeys in there. Kind of like what this picture depicts right here. It's a very similar uh, setup to what they have at the Omaha Zoo, and I really love that. So I kind of uh, am really happy to see that come to here to St. Louis Zoo. So we're about to head up here to the African portion of the zoo. So I'm going to bring you guys along and let's see what animals are out. This is one of the best advantages for coming on a colder day like this. You get to see a bunch of animals that you should be hiding. Like if you go during the summer time, it's all hot. These animals are hiding in their uh, houses or whatever. But on a cold day like this, they're just out and about like they would be out in the wild. So today it is 20 degrees and it's pretty windy and the feels like is like six to seven degrees. So I'm not the happiest, but I am pretty happy that I get to see these animals a lot closer than I would before. So behind us we have a couple animals that are braving the cold temperatures. Right here we have the Somali wild ass. Over there we have the gravy zebras. I mean, they're kind of all huddled, huddled together. I don't know if it's because all the food's on the ground there or because they're cold, but I'm pretty food driven, so I imagine they're pretty food driven as well. And then behind them, we have the Bactrian camel. And out in the wild where they're from, they do experience colder temperatures as well. So they have adapted to have a thicker set of fur already. So that really helps them out here. And it looks like they're doing great. So let's go over here and look at the Takins because I definitely love me some Takins. Behind me here we have the Trans-Caspian Urals and these guys have been huddled together for the past couple of minutes so we thought that would make a really good shot. And these guys are from Turkestan and Pakistan like around that region so these guys could definitely handle these colder temperatures and looks like they're doing great. So let's see what other animals are out today. So please excuse my hair now that we're inside because I had my beanie on and the beanie is terrible for my hair. But behind us here we have the McCord's box turtle and I, I like me some turtles. So we're coming here, right, first thing, first stop in the reptile house and it is a whole lot warmer in here. I think it's like 75 or 80 degrees in this building. So probably in a couple minutes here, like we swarming with people so we wanted to make sure we got in to look at all these super cool animals. Now, I really love this enclosure because these are a semi-aquatic species of turtle, so they have plenty of water for them and land area. Winter season is typically the slower season for zoos, so they definitely take this opportunity to redo some of the enclosures. Behind me, this used to be the Ozark Hellbender enclosure, and honestly, it's one of my favorite enclosures in the entire zoo, or the entire reptile house. But I'm really interested to see what goes in here next, or if they move the Ozark Hellbenders to a different enclosure, because they do have the Eastern Hellbender over there. 
but I'm really interested to see what this water feature is because it looks like a low pond in there we be flowing down here. I'm really looking forward to that. They also took out this one. This was, I believe, the chicken frog, if I have the name correct. It's a really large species of uh, jungle frog, so I'm interested to see what they have in there. And also back here, they have another one that's not quite torn apart yet, but they took the animal out and a bunch of the lights were on and they typically weren't as bright in there before. So, and there's probably three or four other enclosures down there that are also being renovated. So, maybe I'll come back in a couple months and I'll update you guys on what kind of animals they put in these enclosures. We just came out of the reptile building and it is a whole lot colder outside and my hands are already numb. But that doesn't seem to be too big of a deal for the sea lions and the seal behind us here. They're swimming around the water and it's probably staying a whole lot warmer in the water than we're staying out here. But I see them jumping out onto the rocks so they must not be too bothered by the cold. But let's go get some lunch really quick and then keep looking at some animals. I think I want to look at the red pandas next though. Behind me now we have the grizzly bear enclosure and this enclosure is really awesome in my opinion. Just how all the details and everything into it and the cliff face I think is really cool. And then we got the bear over there. He's messing around with a cardboard box that was intact before we started filming this and by the time it took us to walk over here he has already destroyed it. But these guys are definitely well adapted for cooler temperatures. So they can be found up in Canada and Alaska and the northern part of the United States where it gets below zero a lot of the time in the winter. So these guys could definitely handle these cooler temperatures today. This is probably nothing for them. But now we're going to try to walk in the penguins and it's honestly probably warmer in there than it is out here. But let's go warm up and look at some penguins. significantly warmer in here than it was outside so I'm very thankful for that but back here we got the puffins we unfortunately were not able to film in the penguin area as there are a bunch of people out there so we don't want to endanger anybody or break any rules or anything like that but I always love this building I love coming in here just to hear all the penguins and see what's going on I love seeing the penguins swim and just how aerodynamic they are or uh, hydrodynamic I believe the word is for that um, I just think it's super cool coming here every time and see what the animals are up to and just listen to all their really weird noises. Well, let's go back outside and look at the polar bear. And that is going to conclude our annual Christmas Eve St. Louis Zoo tour. It's still a mouthful, I need a better name for that. But obviously a bunch of the warmer temperatured animals, like a bunch of the African species, were not outside today due to the colder temperatures. But what animals I did see, they were still really cool. And being able to run into my buddy Justin Eldon at the reptile house was super cool as well. We were in the reptile house for about 30 to 35 minutes talking with him. And that was a great opportunity to talk about the stuff he's doing and some of the enclosures that are going on. And I just, it's always cool to have an opportunity like that for the people who work here and actually know what they're talking about. But thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and as always, I'll see you next week.